I thought I would uh, remain young forever. But you know, old age will catch up with me and old age comes with a whole lot of challenges. Yeah. Health challenges, baggages and all that. And in all of it, we, we thank God that uh, he has kept us alive. And uh, the lesson I've learned in all this is that you know, one should be always thankful to God. You know, one should be always grateful to God. You know, we journalists, you know, our motto should be, we should be ready. Anything can happen to anybody at any time. One you don't expect. The news will always break. News will always break. I never knew that my friend in Baigui, that's his house over there. I never knew he was going to die. C'est la vie. That's life. You know, anything can happen. You know, I never knew Ojegbase, my friend, you know, would die. You know, so many, you know, every day that you find yourself awake, you wake up, you be grateful to God and uh, know that uh, it's not your own doing, that there is a bigger force in life. You know, and uh, once you really follow the ideas of goodness, ideas of Christianity, and the ideas of humility, all those values, you know, once you not wake up and feel, hey, who are you? Who are you? You know, as if you own the whole world and, uh, you know, life is not like that, you know. The greatest people in life are the humble people. You know, humility is very, very key. And when you see people who have made it, you know, so like yesterday, uh, on Father's Day, I sent a message to my friend, uh, Ademola Adenuga. Say, happy birthday. If you see how that man responds, ah, I feel so honored, sir. <laughs> he, yeah, he's a man that is far older than me. And the way he comes down, the same way his brother Mike, Mike too, mm -hmm. Mike Adenuga. Humility, you know, humility. I don't have about, I don't have 1,000 of what he has, but when you see, if he sees you, he, he's almost like a shoe. You know, that's what we should all learn from, you know, humble people. You know, we should learn from humble people. And it's, 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 it's great. 1870. I pray, I haven't read there, but I know by, by God's grace, whatever the devil says, the devil is a liar. <laughs> you know, I must, I, must, I must see the face of 70 and beyond and all that. You know, it hasn't, it hasn't been easy health-wise. You know, you know, like I say, anything that can help. I'll just, anyway, we'll talk about my prostate cancer and all that. <laughs> we'll talk about that one later. Mm -hmm. Um, do you feel fulfilled with the little you've been able to do professionally and um, otherwise? Well, I'm always greedy for success when it comes to journalism, you know. I want to achieve more than I have achieved, you know. You know, I was, the other day I was seeing those two American icons who wrote a the Watergate, who investigated the Watergate, uh, Bob Woodward and his uh, other, you know, colleague. Uh, you know, I wish, you know, I, I'm as famous as that. That, that uh, there is a story that you know I, I'm I'm celebrated for. You know that, but I thank God for the little I have been able for that God has used me to achieve. Looking back. You know, I, I can count my blessings. You know, for my years as a reporter, I'll be a, yes, everybody is a reporter under the Legua, and uh, you know, he mentored me, he taught me the the, the bolts and the knots of journalism. I learned a lot from him. He also learned a lot from me. I went to the UK, you know, on an attachment program, you know, Commonwealth uh, journalism. Yes, and uh, every every opportunity that comes your way, you must learn. You must learn. You must learn. 
you know, I was attached to so the Sun, the the the, the Sunday Sun newspaper in, in in Newcastle upon Tyne. You know, there I sharpened my nose and my brain for tabloid journalism. You know, when it comes to tabloid, you know, the British, you can't beat them. Hmm. You know, so and even there, when I cast headline. You know, they will be looking at me and, you know, it kept me, and my situation was more like those soldiers who went and fought during, in Burma in, during the Second World War. The black soldiers fight, uh, fighting along whites. You know, when they came, they were filled with a sense of confidence. But yes, you know, Oyibo could do it along the Oyibo people and the Oyibo people respect us, you know. That was the feeling... You know, I, I, I felt, you know, when I came back and uh, on coming back shortly after I was moved to the features desk, you know, as the features editor in the National Concord. And initially I thought maybe it was a demotion and my editor as, as I then, uh, what's the name? Uh, Shina Dedikwe. I hope he's alive now. I think he's dead. Oh my God. Ah, see, man, this is what I'm telling you. So, you know, just go there, prove yourself, you know. And when I got there, you know, I had just written a book with my colleague, Ding Baigui. We had written the art of features writing. So when we got there, what they were doing was not features. You just, you just write essays and be planting it here, the role of this. And I said, <laughs> let's, let, let's start something new, you know. So we, 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 we caused a shift, a paradigm shift in, in the art of feature writing. You know, we started looking at features right from human angle stories. You know, bizarre things, uh, things that are commonly uncommon. You know, looking at, you know, we created column, man in the street, uh, faces and places, uh, people started reading Song, uh, be a national concord because of our uh, input. You know, the, the, you know, we, we, we change the paper in a way. And I thought, you know, every situation where one goes, you know, one should do his best. You know, prove, you don't know who's watching. So, uh, my MD was so impressed with what I was doing that he called me one day. He said, Mike, you know, he came back from a holiday. Mike, I have a challenge I want to give you. I want you to start a, a Saturday paper. What year was this? That was 1988. Oh, 1989. Yes, 89. Go and give me a dummy. Go and give me a dummy. So, that was how, you know, I had just had my twins, that is 1988, you know, but so I became about Beji and, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, you know, Yoruba, they believe when you have twins, good things happen to you, you know. So I saw it as, you know, part of my promotion and all that. So I went around, you know, thinking, what would I do? Change, change, what I would do to change the whole, you know, bring a paper that is different, that is, you know, so I was going around airports looking at British newspapers and trying to get inspiration, get, trying to get ideas. You know, as at that time, Daily Mohammed was uh, in African Concord. You know, and uh, we were close. He too was writing for me. If anybody who has anything, I asked you to come and, you know. So I told Daily to you know, come and join me on Weekend Concord. He didn't understand the concept in He said, ah, no, 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 no. Ah, no, you are not, no, what, 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 me? He thought it was the, when I, when I told him the paper is Weekend Concord, you know, and uh, he thought it was like Lagos Weekend or all those, uh, you know. So, eventually, you know, I, I talked to him, I said, look, this is where journalism, and let's start something, let's shake, you know. So we built a team, but my team was built around, you know, uh, Dele, Momodu, and uh, 
you know, Femi Adeshino, you know, Eric Osagi and all that. Then some other guys, you know, around. Young men, brilliant. That is, you know, my, uh, my, my best moment in, in, as a journalist. That idea. We're very fresh. We're young. We're, our brains were very, were creative, you know. We could, we could see news from every dimension, you know. So, uh, when I look at him, I ask him, where, go and give me, he said there was a madman that every morning he'll be ringing bell, repairing the kingdom of God, and he was getting towards it. I said, yeah, go and track him down. You know, and that's your, that's our front page, you know. So, he followed the man, the madman or the, the prophet or whatever, you know, to his uh, abode. And I mean, he followed him throughout and he got a good human angle story. You know, but we didn't lead with that one now. You know, uh, Daily Mahmoud came with an idea of uh, Shoinka. You know, nothing has been written about the love life of Shoinka. So, so he went, he went to meet the wife. The, uh, Liberian. the Liberian, you know, you know, harass the woman, cajole her to the woman, you know, gave her a very, very great story about my life, the, the, her love life with showing Ka. So that was our front page. That was our opener. You know, when you are coming with the, the new paper, it's like atomic bomb. You must... You must shake the whole nation. Let let them be quick. It was one story that you know everybody resonated with, and because it was, it has all the elements you can think of about news. Showing Ka, uh, he had not won Nobel that time. He was, you know, the man was very angry. He won the Nobel Medal. I will deal with you, blah 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 blah, and I was so happy. Why? That is the definition of news. That is the definition of news. News is something that somebody doesn't want you to publish about him. The rest is advert. The rest is advertising. So when I see, you know, journalists, I like to younger journalists. I like to tell them that look, news is the best thing that God ever created. You know. Look for it. Look for it. You know, when you are covering news with your colleagues, you know, it's like war. You, it's like a race. You want to outwit everybody. Go and think. Think, think. If you are given an assignment, spend the whole night thinking, what is my angle? That's what I do as a reporter. Ah, any story I go, what's, what's everybody's angle? I will, Analyze everybody's angle first. What is my Kawu Infa's angle? You know, so just as in marketing, differentiation is, is the key to everything. So you must differentiate yourself, you know, if you want to really excel in this uh, profession. So, how about headlines? Headline right. Ah, headline too. That's, that's the difference. Situation thing too, you know. You know, you 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 look. You first look at what everybody. The obvious. What is the obvious? What? How is everybody going to cast this headline tomorrow? And you ask yourself, how am I going to do it? You know, how am I? It involves a whole lot of uh, reflection. It reflect. It requires a lot of creativity. It's not just words, you know. It also involves pictures, pictures, pictures. You can, I remember the day my, my most unforgettable headline, like people say, is the one I laugh here or for you, was arrested in UK for carrying, a, in, in suspicion, I mean, carrying drugs. He was in, I don't know whether he, I mean, whether they smuggled it inside his uh, luggage or whatever, but to call it all, it was, he was in trouble over drugs in UK. And they brought the story. I mean, they were to write the story. It happened on Friday, and we're going to town on, on Saturday. I said, what is it? 
Everybody has arrested, uh, everybody has uh, reported a lot of fear arrested. Or everybody who report a lot of fear arrested for drugs. So what, what will I do? Okay. You guys go to the library, bring me all the pictures of Alafi. And they brought about five pictures. I put one down, I put one another one down, <laughs> and I saw him laughing. I said, Wow, this is it. And I said, Laugh, I laugh, laugh, laugh. Not a laughing matter. Not a laughing matter. You know. That is for me a headline I have not been able to, to match or beat. Yeah. It's not because I wrote it, you know. Well, even if I'm praising myself, I have the right to praise myself, you know. So but how are you able to sell the edition at that time that the figures went astronomical? The sales figures. And that's what I'm telling you. Ability to differentiate. Ability to to, to do the extraordinary ability to give readers what they want to read. You know, most of the stories we carry those days in Weekend Congo, they might even be stale. They might be the news of the week. But readers are ready to wait for Weekend Concourse angle. Yeah. They know we will take it from, an, from a, an angle that nobody has ever thought of. And... Uh, so that became a, a motivation for us because we don't want, we wouldn't want to to disappoint our readers, you know. You know, it's it's, it's not just words. If it is a picture that will sell the story, a laughing, laughing, put a laughing, big picture, blow the picture, you know. If it is one word headline, blow it, you know. Headline is a totality, it's a mixture of so many things, you know. One, you should know your onions. Two, you should be praying to God. Because God is the one that gives headline. God is the number one editor. Say, God, give me this headline, give me this headline, give me, you know. So by the time you continue doing this thing, you keep doing it, you keep on improving. And you become a master of your game, you know. As an editor, I don't wait for news to break before I start coining headlines. Coining headlines has become like a game for me. I think of imaginary stories. Yeah. And I say, well, if this happened, how would I, how, how would I, you know, if the best accolade I can ever be given is to say I'm the best headline writer in Nigeria. Ha! That one, I, I will grab it. That is, if that is the only thing they will, they, they will put on my grave. That is the best headline writer. You know, it gives me joy, you know, that to, 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 to cast a headline that, you know, makes an impact. You know, that, I mean. I've also noticed that you like interviews. You like interviews a lot. What else? What else? What else? Interview is the is is the secret, is the key. You know. Interviews generate the news. And I the, to be able to you have to be able to ask the right questions. The good questions that will you know, you have, before you go for any assignment, you will have done your homework. You know, done your homework and uh, you know, no what is it that the person will say that will, that will, that will generate you know, a big sensation, you know? These things cannot, you cannot say it all, you know, but it becomes, you do it so much that it becomes a part and parcel of you, you know? Then you should also read, read other papers. This, this, we are in the age of internet. In, in our days, we didn't have internet. We didn't have... But these days, you know, what, what do I do? Uh, 12, uh, 12, uh, I'll be 11 30. I'll go to Sky News. I'll be waiting. What is tomorrow's headline? What the hell are they, why are they casting the headline? That's one of my, you know, I just, this British have you know.
and I clap. If it is not, you know, I I plan to write a book on headlines, the art of writing headlines. I hope I will have the strength. God will keep me alive to be able to write all the books that uh, I, I plan to write. Which, which other I, books? Which other books you want to write? <laughs> Apart from headline writing. Uh, I know you've done features. Yes, I've done features. I've done world editors. Yes. You have it. I've done, I've done world editors. And uh, uh, I haven't written the Weekend Concourse story. That's true. I haven't written. I hope you know, I saw the uh, Ogumbi. Uh, is uh, what was the name? Uh, Doctor Yemi Ogumbi. Doctor Yemi Ogumbi is excellent memoir. Yeah. I saw it. I was inspired. You know, say ah, me too. Maybe if I am seventy-five, I also should be able to, you know, tell my story and tell the weekend concord story and all that. But well, the, the weekend concord story. Can you tell us a bit about um, what was the height? And the sales that you ever had, and which can you remember the story that gave you the the highest print run? Ah, but I know you did also did one on Shino Peters, Shinomania, Shinomania, and I know it sold, but yeah. I don't know whether that. that um, no, I don't. I think there was a time we sold two fifty thousand, two fifty thousand, but I don't. I don't remember, or maybe. Maybe the edition on, uh, on uh, oh dear, that dear. Okay, okay. Yes. When he was handcuffed, handcuffed, I just put a whole picture of him in handcuffs. Then I write, oh dear. And that one sold too. Then me too sold. Me and Ezekiel yeah, yeah. when she died. Hmm. You know? What was that one? Oh, me. Hmm. You know, very emotional. The headline should be very emotional. 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 You know, it should. It should, it should be aimed at the heart of a person and you blast the heart of the person. You know, blast the heart positively. Blast the brain. You know, you know, and those days, I was a thing of pride walking along the street and seeing vendors displaying, uh, displaying we can conquer every start. There was no, no competitor, no rival at, th at that time. It was later that Nduka uh, uh, or came with his joker. He, said, I, he was saying, I know how to deal with these people. Don't worry. How did he deal with us? He brought color. He brought color. As at that time, we were just black and white. There was no color. So the vendor who put uh, this day here, who put Weekend Concord, that, that's life for you. Life is a game of uh, competition, you, see, you know. Positive competition. Mm. But you repeated the same feat with um, the sun. Yeah. Was it the same concept or, or this? What are the similarities and differences between the two concepts? Uh, the sun, yes, we started with the Nigerian skin of the tabloids. And do you can see the sun said was almost like the sun sun of, of uh, UK, you know. And uh, when we came in, we brought a white man. There was a white man in our one of our directors, you know, production director, Alan. You know, you know, I wrote I wrote the script. You know, it's part of the talent. You know, I wrote the TV script. You know, say so here is my Kawin fan. You remember him, you know, we can conquer days, blah, blah, blah. Now we're starting. People thought it were even son of London. So, you know, it, it, seeing a white man too, you know. So it was almost, you know, you can't, you can't break away from your, from your, from your past, you know. So we carry the, we can conquer the experience, you know, to, to the son. No, but the son was, you know, the owner wanted something more political. So we tried to blend uh, human angle and politics together. You know, I, said, I think that was, that was the main, you know, ordinary, otherwise journalism is journalism. You know, we, we brought Babangida. As at that time, Babangida had not spoken to anybody on, uh, 
you know, I've forgotten stuff. <laughs> so we, we, we brought him by Bangida after, uh, is it, is it, was it June 12? After June 12, Abi? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that was the first time he was, he was talking and uh, we blasted it. That was how we were able to you know, break into the market and, you know, as a, once you, you you come into the market with a bank, it it, 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 it helps a lot. It's, not, it's just like 100 meters. Once you are able to make a good start, you know, you, you end well. Mm. The print uh, is in trouble and mm. people are not selling. What do you think is um, the reason or what? I, I wish I had an, an answer. Wait, you know, I wish, you know, people, people, people like free, free, they will just go online and, you know, but still, you know, you should still give stories that people cannot resist, you know, you should, you know, hide, hide, I mean, have your creativity, you know, force yourself to think, you know, that, that's it. Everything is in the brain. You know. mm. Do you think the coming, you know, online has affected them? Yeah. Um, oh, definitely. It's all over the world now. It's not, uh, it's not Nigeria alone, you know. It's not, you know, but... In a country like India, even with print media, I mean with, with internet, internet, still their circulation is even bigger now. You know, and I don't I, I don't know why it is. And so maybe maybe we should, I mean we should study the Indian for a model and see what is it that is uh, making people. You know, maybe it's pricing, maybe. You know, we, we we started the paper like that too. After we left, we left uh, the sun. We prized at fifty naira. What was the name? Entertainment Express. Uh, it, it, it made its own impact. Too. It sold. You know, it sold very well at fifty fifty naira. You know, but by the time we raised it to hundred naira, now people. You know, people, the, the market revolt, revolted, you know. You know entertainment has spread also, we did our best, but, you know, it's, 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 it's not an easy thing. You know, having an entertainment newspaper in Nigeria, you need a lot of uh, promotion, a lot of money, you know, a lot of money to really push it. Well, we didn't have that. We didn't have that amount, so much money. You know, we didn't. You know, we should. It's a kind of uh, paper where you should be ready. You should, you should think long term, and you should have the money long term. You know, it's just like a Ukraine-Russia war. You should. You should think long term. It's not an immediate thing. You know, so. You know, you should have enough money to be able to back it up. But we didn't, we couldn't back it up. So when my friend died now, you know, he almost died with the paper too. We couldn't continue. And there was no more motivation. To, so we had to, to pack it up. You know, and it's unfortunate. You know, Sonny Adebwase also, who was our partner too, he too is dead. You know. Sometimes this life self. You know, how did the passing away of the children affect you? Uh, I don't think that was like a dream. Yeah, it was. Uh, there's no way they, I don't think of being bound. There's no way they. Was it was living next Yes, day. yes, yes, yes. I can't. I've, uh, you know, death, death has not really rattled, shaken me. Death of any man has not even shaken me like my friends. Not even my, when my parents died, you know. There are many situations 
I wish he was still alive. I mean, if he had been alive, maybe we we'll would have achieved more to, together. Yeah. You know, we we'll have achieved more. As, as they say, two heads are better than, you know, one. You know, there are things I do alone. That's, you know, if he were around, you know, we'll do it together. You know, like this part of that book, you know, he, he wrote almost maybe 60% of it, you know, he, you know, but he didn't even, he wasn't alive to see the book. Mm -hmm. you know? That's that the, the, the pain, the, the irony of life, you know. You know so, how did, you, I, how did you meet him, sir? Oh, we met, we met in, son, I was, I was, in, we met in, uh, son. Is this no, son? Sorry. No, son, uh, Concord. Sunday Concord. Sunday Concord. Under the leg you are in there. He just walked into our office and uh, one day, no, did he? Yes, he brought a story. About a story about children, you know, how they, you know, how they, how they woke up, the trouble of being a child in Lagos, how to wake up and time more where to go to school. He joined all those children, entry more when capturing and he wrote a very, very captivating piece and which the Legua used. And they started asking me, who wrote this? Look for this man by all means, as the Legua for you. Mm -hmm. So luckily one day he came to collect his uh, payment. That's where he was given uh, a letter of appointment and uh, you know we started working together we became so much almost instantly you know i was i was a senior but i didn't see him as a senior i saw him as my friend and you know like when abiola was 50 you know we covered his uh, 50th birthday in uh, abiokuta and we came and wrote, we had what we call Sunday Concord Magazine. Okay. Uh -huh. So we, 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 we understood each other. We were like two tennis, you know, doubles player. And we understood everybody had his own strength and everybody brought something to the table. And, you know, so his death was a real shock, shock to me. And that's why. You know, immediately that I said, no, I was writing a book that Dingba would, would, would like, would see, and he would like. You know, and I must use his name. Even though he wasn't, he didn't join me. That's why I wrote that book now. Okay. Uh, boardroom, 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 boardroom leaders. leaders. You know, ah, Dingba was a boardroom guru. When you see him in the boardroom, he's, it's all like me, I'll be in the boardroom, and me, I'll be quite tight now. <laughs> you know, so, I went about, I was asking myself, what is the book? You know, that thing that will read, will, like, will see me, you know, where, where a book, he, he, he will have been part of if it was still, say, no, let me go in. So I went about to interview all those people you saw, you know, uh, Christopher Collade, and Mike, <coughs> Felix Ohiwere, all those boardroom, Giant, you know, and I'm happy the book the book sold very well, you know. In spite of the high pricing, people still, you know, some people will even buy it out of anger. Why must a book cost like this? They will still out of anger, they will still buy, it, you know. That's the thing now. That's the beauty of journalism. That's the beauty of journalism. Knowledge. If you don't know, go to the expert, go and ask. There's no book I cannot write on. Even if it's as you write a military strategy book. What does it cost me? I'll sit down and read what is military strategy. Think of all the questions. Think of, uh, gather all my questions. Go to Babangida. Yeah. Uh, what, what, why did you join the army? And blah, 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 blah. The wars you, you fought. Yeah, why did you uh, artillery? Why, why, why do we need artillery? What do you, you know? How did you capture this? How did you capture? 
what the strategy in, in terms of military. I'll finish with him. I'll go to another general, General Abudu Salami. I'll go. I'll interview him. Go to Akin Ade, you know. I, let everybody tell his uh, military story. And, uh, I've gotten a book with that one now. Military, stra military strategy. I'll get an angle. If, if, you know, he's Nigerian. I'll just give a title. It's not necessarily 50 Nigerian generals, you know, whatever it is. And people will buy. They will buy. They will buy. So I will beg my fellow journalists, you know, that, you know there, is, there is joy in writing books. You know, a journalist, I mean, writing books is an extension of uh, journalism. It's a higher form of journalism. You know, it's a higher form. And uh, a journalist who doesn't write a book in his lifetime, you know, has missed something. Has missed something. So I will, you know, I will enjoy all journalists. You know. With that background, you can open doors anywhere. You can, you know, you can open, you can talk to surgeons, you know, you know. Like when I had my sickness of of late, I had prostate cancer. I went to the hospital instead of thinking of myself. I was thinking of writing a book on cancer patients. You know, talking to how to do. You know, idea of book started coming. Talking to doctors. You know, what is the cause of cancer? This, that, that, that. How did you discover it? Uh, it started with the prostate enlargement, right? And uh, everybody has it. When you, well, by the time you reach the age of fifty and you start growing, you discover. You know, that's why I have to advise that everybody should be going for checks regularly. It's very important because if there is anything there, you let them discover it fast before it becomes, uh, it goes to the level where it's no longer curable. You know, so my doctor, my urologist was doing biopsy. They did biopsy first. They didn't see anything. They say you are free. I went to church to make a Thanksgiving. Yeah. They did another bio. I mean, about a year or two again, they did another biopsy because the PSA was rising, you know. And uh, the doctor said, "Okay, I cannot let you go since this PSA is rising. It means there is something hidden." So. Go and do the biopsy somewhere okay. in another place, but let it, let them take more tissues. So that's where I went, and uh, you know I couldn't even go for results. It was my wife that went for the results, and she brought it. She didn't even. Really, I started interpreting it. My spirit told me, uh, you know, glycine score is it the stage two or whatever it is. So. I went to see my urologist and, uh, you know, he told me that cancer is, cancer is not a death sentence, you know. Now that it has been seen, detected that it's cancer, you know, you either have to go for, you know, surgery or you go for radiotherapy. So I asked him, okay, choose for me. Now, which one do I go? Is this surgery or radiotherapy? He said, well, I cannot decide for you. You have to decide on your own. So I hit the town like a reporter looking for story now. So eventually, I, I, I did, I googled in YouTube looking for experts to say, you know, even the experts are divided. They don't know where to go, whether it's you know, but well, eventually I said, okay, let me go for radiotherapy. 
So they said a new hospital center, Maserut, is what they call it, Maserut Cancer Hospital. So I went there. Lagos. Yes, in Lagos. Mm -hmm. That's where I did, I mean, uh, review therapy for 45 days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. therapy is mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. else. Side effects. You know, side effects. You know. Cancer is a terrible thing. It's mm -hmm. terrible. You know. Terrible. And I would advise all every young man be go and and check your 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 men, your 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 your, your prostrate state, you know, whether it is this or that, you know. Because it's, it's, it's a sickness of old people. The older you, you know, the older you get, the, the, the more likely, you know, it's not everybody. I hope you, ch you, you check your own too. Yes. Ah, okay. You will not have it in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> ah. Answer. You, the nights of that uh, thing, I couldn't sleep. I said, ah. So is this, is, is this people will tell you all kinds of advice. Uh, do this. Uh, don't do this. Go here. Go that. Don't do this. The advice will be so many that you are overwhelmed. I burst into tears. I say, ah. Well, at the end of the day, you know, God has been very faithful. You know, God has been very faithful. After the I've been managing it. And, you know, I've been managing it. You know. The famous people, Walesho Inka had it. So, <laughs> he had it. I have had to go and Google. Like, what, how, what, what is the treatment Walesho Inka went through? You know. Well, God will help and deliver us. You know. Amen. So, at some point, what are the effects? And if that's it, is there any? Uh, do I regret anything? If I, if I have to start all over again, I'll still be, a, I will still have something to do with writing. I'll still be a journalist, you know. I'll still be a journalist. It's, it's, it's not, it's not all about money now. What what is important in life is uh, having a fulfilled life, you know, having a fulfilled life. You know, I do what what makes me happy. You know, I do what, what makes me happy. You know, if I see young bankers, you know, count rolling in millions, billionaire, it doesn't move me. It doesn't move me. But that is not the talent God gave me. You know. I'm, I'm standing in my lane, you know, where God put me, you know. I only pray that, you know, by the time I go to the grave, let me empty everything in my brain, every book, let me write every book, you know. You know my, my, if I'm afraid of death, it's because of the books that I'm writing. That is all. It's not because of the, it's because of the books. I want to be able to you know, finish writing my books, you know. I mean, let me, books Books are like children. Mm. They are like children, they are your children. You know, just as I pray for my children, I pray for my books too. How many have written those? Can I count? Mm. They, we don't count children now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, we have, uh, how many? Okay. Yes, close to 10. Huh? Close to 10 and... You know, we are, I'm still writing, and uh, it's it, it's 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 cha it's interesting and challenging and fulfilling. So within the industry, people always say that um, anytime you see like one fact, there's always his tip in his pocket, his notebook, and his pen. Is that true? That's it now. I'm like a Boy Scout journalist, you know. Be ready, be ready, ever ready, you know. When this breaks, it doesn't take you by surprise, you know. 
And uh, these days, technology, you know, has made things so simple. With your phone, you don't need you don't need this one, you know. With your phone, you can you can you can do all. Your, I do all my interviews on phone on iPhone. And when I need photograph, I take my photograph instantly. You know. So you've been a journalist for how long, sir? Uh, ever since I left the University of Lagos, I read Masco in 1977. Yes, and uh, I did my e in Josh. Uh, while in Josh, while while doing my e call, Concord people came about. It. Yes, I think I worked with news agency of Nigeria for one year, and I was posted to to Josh. Yes. So and uh, in Jaws, I was working with the Nduka Irabo, who was with the Daily Times in those days. He ended up with the Guardian, you know him, and yes, he was the, uh, the Guardian Express editor, yes. Ah, Nduka was a reporter. Yeah. We, he too would tell, he would tell anybody that Mike is a reporter. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. He was a guy that I learned a lot from, and he also learned a lot from me. We we'll will go, we we'll go out to report like this. We will we'll be cycling ourselves up. What is the angle here? What is this? May God bless, bless, bless the mm -hmm. You know, there are some people are saying in that uh, as editor he was a bully. That's the way it should be. An editor should be a bully, or if you are not a bully, you should find a way of, you know, getting your stories. You know. Journalism is not for lazy people. It's not, you know. It's for people who, who are ready to die to get the story. Eh? Ah. How about um, your impressions of the late um, Billy Graham? Wow, is he? He's our Gakota Kota. Ah. It makes me wonder what, what would he have been doing were he to be alive now? You know, I'm sure if he had been alive, maybe. This world will not have died. You know? Ah, he was a man of ideas and he was an inspirational leader. He was a leader among leaders, I mean, a, a leader of any journalist. You know? He had his charisma, he has his everything. You know, he's an editor you wanted to work for, you wanted to impress. Because if you, if you, if if you give him something he likes, ah, you come out the whole corridor will hear that, uh, you know, come and read what Mike has written, you know. You know, well, how did I meet Delegua? I think I was in Kaduna as the chief correspondent when I came to work with the when I got a job of Concord, they posted me to Kaduna as their chief correspondent. So I was just reporting routine, 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 and all that. But I had to sit there and challenge myself. I said, no, this can't be me. I can't be doing this, he said. He added, no, 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 no. So I started, I created a column for myself. You know, human angle. Short column, not much. You know, there was a, there was an interview, I mean, a press conference we went. Amin Khan was, 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 was addressing the press conference. Amin Khan of PRP. Then there was a lady there who just stood up, asking a question in the house, not even, you know. And I was, I saw news in that one, an old woman. You know, so I had to take an interpreter to to interview her. Why, you know, what 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 kind of journalist? Why are you not using pen? Why are you not? Why don't you have a notebook? And you have a newspaper. He, he, she reported for for the house. Uh, she needs, you know, newspaper of a new Nigerian. Okay. Uh, Tafi Kobo. Tafi. Something Kobo. Uh, so 
I sat her down, did an interview, a short story, then sent it to Delegi one. You know, so he titled it well for me, in Hagia <laughs> something, reporter without notebook. No <laughs> When I saw it, amen, I was so happy. I was so excited. He gave the column reporter's notebook. From that day, I said this, I vow, I said, nobody is going to take this column from me. So I made sure you know, every week I sent him something. That's how I became columnist under the legal one. So one that was a uh, vacancy. You know, in so in when the uh, you know he brought me to Lagos from Kaduna to be working under him and all that. So and the rest is history. You know, uh, uh, that day, Sunday time Sunday Concord was a was a learning ground. It was a real university of journalism. There's no one who go there and. Uh, you will not, uh, that, that is where I really, really, both as a writer, as a reporter, as an, there is nothing you will not do. Mm. You know, you write Sunday magazine, you write news analysis, you write uh, essay, you write everything. They, they teach you all around, you know. So they groom you if you are ready to learn and you're ambitious. There's no how you go through that place and you don't succeed, you know. Mm.